I'm Dr. Nick Redbone, host of radio shows and I MC events and I'm a stand-up comedian and sometimes I'm a musician and, you know, I've basically done everything I can to dodge any real responsibility. I'm an Idaho kid. I, I was born here. Uh, my family's been in Filer, Idaho since, I mean, there's a street named after my great granddad. It was like growing up in Mayberry. I mean, that's, that's honestly it. You hear the joke, you know, the old term, well, we didn't ever lock our doors, but we didn't have to. We didn't have to lock our doors. I can remember when town was so small that to call anybody in town, it was four digits on a rotary phone because those were the phones that Filer Mutual Telephone gave out. You know, there were horses walking down the street. There was, it, it was, it was idyllic, it really was. And you could grow up simple and kind of stay out of trouble or get into as much trouble as you could, but it was never enough trouble to be bad trouble because it was only Filer trouble. I was kicked out of the play. I should tell this story. I should absolutely tell this story because it's one of the most formative experiences of my entire life, period. I was in Dracula. It would have been 91 or 92. CSI's production of Dracula, Tony Mannon directing, with one of the most incredible casts of talent you've ever seen. I was fresh out of high school and I got the part of Renfield. Now Renfield is the bug eater. Renfield's the crazy one. Dracula's the first thrall of Dracula, who's insane and I was killing it. This was when I was still, I was young and I was bendy and I could move and it was a really physical part and I was stealing it. The guy that was playing Dracula told me, dude, you're stealing the show. And it went right to my head. And I was busy playing guitar and chasing girls and you know, smoking substances and drinking too much. And I started skipping rehearsal because I thought I could. And then I was on my way to rehearsal and Tony Mannon met me as I was walking from one building to Fine Arts, there's a little depression, a little sunken like like sitting area in between the two buildings. He stopped me and he sat me down there and he said, I'm replacing you in Dracula because you don't come to rehearsal and I don't know where you are and I don't know where your head is. And he said, he didn't kick me out of the program. He could have. He said, I'm gonna keep you around, but you need to prove to me that you're gonna do this because you have talent, but you have no work ethic. Talent with no work ethic is wasted talent. It might as well not exist. And that stuck with me. The next show they did, you're a good man, Charlie Brown. Now I was a pretty good performer and a pretty good singer. They put me as like a side character. I was like pig pen or something. Like no lines, no nothing. I, he made me pay my penance. The next show was Dark of the Moon and he gave me a great B part. One of the best B parts and I crushed it. It was during that show and during that whole experience that I realized he's right. If you have talent and no work ethic, who gives a shit? They'll never see you do it because you'll never make it to the show. He taught me that. I joke about not working and joking about not doing much. Okay, I put in hours. When I'm doing a full radio show and then I'm driving to a casino to do a full night of comedy and then the next day I'm expected to do another day of comedy and I'm still in a hotel. I mean, I do hours. When I'm gonna go you know, pack up $1,000 worth of gear and $30 worth of gas to go drive somewhere to make $25 making music, I'm working. That's, that's all work. If you don't work, you end up being the most talented guy ever to work the drive through at Arby's. Period. End of story. So yeah, yeah, that, one of the most, it absolutely changed my life. This wasn't ever my plan. This was never the plan. Radio was never the plan. I was a guitar player, so I was gonna go be in, in, in bands. I was gonna go stay on the road forever, and I was gonna, that's what I was gonna do. And I was gonna do restaurants as a dodge, because it was a nice temporary job. You didn't really have to commit much. You'd do the job, and then when you were done working there, you'd just go. I did restaurants for 11 years while I was playing in bands, and then I played in an 80s cover band. We ended up working in a bar that doesn't even exist anymore on an 80s cover night. There was a radio station there as part of the promotion. And within two weeks, the general manager of that radio station asked me if I wanted to come work. And that was it. I mean, I walked in the door. I was doing mornings on a huge FM signal within 
two months. It was insane. And it just went from there. And that was almost 20 years ago. Seriously, I never planned on it. And I've just managed to stay in the game. Well, Southern Idaho's rock station, 103 One The Edge. My name's Dr. Nick Redbone, a ray of sunshine. The name is funny. It came about by committee. I was on one station getting ready to move to a rock station. They were going to make me the program director of the brand new rock station, and they decided they needed to rebrand me as well. So I had been JR forever, and they decided I needed a new name. So the general manager I worked for at the time and a consultant had a meeting. After their meeting, two people come to me and say, well, after our meeting, we've decided you're going to be Nick. I said, okay. And I said, well, then I want to be Dr. Nick, like Dr. Demento, and Dr. Johnny Fever from WKRP in Cincinnati, my, my radio idol. Give it to me straight, doctor. I can take it. <laughs> but I wanted to be Dr. Nick. And then Howard Mayhem from Madness of Mayhem in the AM said, and your last name has to be Redbone, because it's clearly a dick joke. Dr. Nick Redbone. So, um, beer, it's a very popular beverage in America. You may have heard of it. In some ways, it's changed dramatically, and in some ways, it hasn't changed at all. The technology has changed tremendously. The fact that there are more distractions, there are more uh, options for people to get their entertainment, that's changed. But radio still gets like a 93% penetration rate as far as as marketing as far as the, the the demographics the money demographics go people are still listening to radio and it's local so it's engaging i will be the guy that can tell you in the morning what the roads are like because i drove on them national tv can't do that the internet can't do it. i can do that and i can tell you when the schools are closed because they call me first thing in the morning so that's never changed local badass radio has never changed the technology around it has changed. And now, instead of just broadcasting on radio, I have to broadcast on Facebook and broadcast on Instagram and broadcast on social media. You know, social media, I have to be out on everything. I have to have a YouTube channel. That's changed. And the guys that haven't changed with that aren't in the business anymore. So that part of the, you know what I mean? That part of the question is a little... <laughs> Anybody who knows my radio shtick knows that I've always had these rules for the Freak Nation, for, for, for the listeners. And the three rules, and I think these work in all of life, are this. Apply this to everything and tell me it doesn't work. Number one, be cool to each other. Think about how much greater the world would be, generally, if we were all just cool to each other. Number two, be who you are and be what you are. Don't hide who you are or what you are for somebody else. Be you. Number three, do no harm, but take no shit. Okay? Don't go out of your way to hurt anybody, but don't let anybody hurt you. Don't let them take advantage of you. You know, if that means move into the other lane, cool. I'll give you all the room possible. Don't, you know, I'm going to keep moving out of your way. If you corner me, you know, then I'll probably have to bite your ear off. But before then, hey man, I'll be way over here doing my thing, you be over there doing your thing, and hey, peace, love, and rock and roll. What an easy way to live if you just try it. Mind you, it's easy for me to say. I haven't had to be a grown-up yet. Canyon Crest is throwing a big, huge birthday party. And on my birthday, the June 22nd, I'm going to do a stand-up set, and then I'm going to do 45 minutes of music and invite friends up to come play with me and musicians that I've known throughout the years. I'm more known as a radio guy and as a comedian, but I've been a musician longer than any of it. And so I'm really excited about doing some live music again. I would love it if you want to find out more about what I do, find me on Instagram, find me on Facebook, find me on any social media you can think of. I'm probably there. Dr. Nick Redbone, join the party. It very much is a communal thing. I love to have people involved in all of the stuff that I do, and I entertained you for 20 years. I would love to keep doing it. That's about it. That's about it. Please do it. That's how I get paid. Please like me. Please like me. That's obnoxious. Pretty cool.